Welcome to Alistair Art. Today we will be looking at the art of Andy Warhol and his development of pop art. Andrew Warhol, better known as Andy Warhol, was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on August 6, 1928. He is best known for his work in pop art. Pop art refers to art that was using subjects that were already in popular culture, like celebrities, foods, comics, and more. They were things that everybody already knew about. Its name is like that of pop music, which is popular music. Andy was a first-generation American. Both of his parents were from Miko, Austria, Hungary, which is now called Mikova in current-day Slovakia. Andy's father had moved to the United States in 1914 and his mother joined him in 1921. Andy had two older brothers, Pavel, also known as Paul, and Jan. When Andy was six, he developed Sidahim's chorea, which led him to be confined to his bed at times. While he was stuck in bed, he would listen to the radio and collect pictures of movie stars. This had a profound influence on his work later in life. He graduated in 1945 from Shinley High School and had planned on studying art education at the University of Pittsburgh. Instead, he ended up going to Carnegie Institute, which is now known as Carnegie Mellon University, and studied commercial art. While in college, he was the art director for the student art magazine, which might have been the first place any of his artwork was ever published. He was also a member of the Bow Art Society, Andy graduated with a bachelor's in fine arts in 1949 and moved to New York City to begin his career in magazine illustration and advertising. Warhol's early career was in commercial and advertising art. His first commission was for Glamour magazine where he used his skills to give a unique feel to the shoes. The shoe designer really loved the artwork. Andy even used them in some of his earliest gallery shows. It was also around the same time in the early 1950s that Warhol learned screen printing from artist Max Arthur Cohn, and he also developed his blotted line technique. This technique involved applying ink to a paper and transferring it by blotting it while it was still wet. He was able to repeat the basic process over and over to create a basic image with endless variations. This is also when he began to drop the letter A from the end of his last name after it was left out in an editing error that was published and he became known as Andy Warhol instead of Warhalla. The early 1960s is when Warhol began to exhibit his pop art. He was part of what was known as the West Coast debut of pop art. He also had shows in New York City. Some of these shows featured other artists like Roy Lichtenstein, Klaus Oldenburg, Jim Dine, Robert Indiana, Cristo, and Wayne Thiebaud to name a few. This was the time where he began to make art which featured iconic images, for instance, the Campbell soup cans, Coke bottles, $100 bills, and celebrities like Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, Muhammad Ali, and so many more. It was during this time that Andy opened his fame artist space known as The Factory. This was the space to make art, film, and have artists, musicians, and other like-minded people mingle. The factory had three different locations between 1962 and 1984. The inside of the factory was decorated in tin foil, fractured mirrors, and even silver paint. On June 3, 1968, Andy was shot at the factory by a radical writer named Valerie Solanus. She had even been in one of Warhol's films a year before. This event would change the way Andy lived the rest of his life. He had damaged eight different organs, and it left him with scars and needing to wear a corset for the rest of his life. It also made him much more guarded and less experimental and collaborative. On a side note on this slide, there's also the artwork Silver Car Crash Double Disaster, which at an auction sold for $105 million in 2013. In the 1970s, Andy continued to be commissioned by people in high society, musicians, film stars, and more. During this time, he frequented the famous disco Studio 54, and he also moved the factory to a bigger space. Warhol was doing more art which was considered controversial because of either how it was made or the subject matter itself. It was also in the 1970s that Andy began working more on publishing works. He helped co-found Interview Magazine in 1969, which was a magazine about film, fashion, and pop culture. The magazine is still around today. In the 1980s, Warhol collaborated with many different young and upcoming artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, Francesco Clemente, and Keith Haring. Sadly, it was also during this time that Andy was criticized for his art kind of being stale and for being 
a business artist. Andy also became interested in television in the 1980s, appearing on shows like Saturday Night Live and The Love Boat. He also produced two different shows for MTV, Andy Warhol's TV and Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes, named after his famous quote saying that in the future, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes. The show featured people from film, music, art, including people like Judd Nelson, Courtney Love, and Keith Haring. Andy Warhol died on February 22, 1987 at the age of 58 in New York due to an irregular heartbeat after his gallbladder surgery. Warhol will be remembered as the father of pop art, being an eccentric person, and one of the most influential artists of all time. For the project we're going to be doing today, the materials we'll need are going to be a large piece of paper, a smaller piece of paper, and we'll get to the dimensions later, a pencil, an eraser, and then something to add color with, whether that's things like colored pencils, markers, or preferably paints. Here are a couple examples of what you can do with the Andy Warhol style project today. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making a logo, like either the money sign or even the cornflakes box, and then we will be using lots of different colors, kind of like how Andy did his work. Here are two more examples. We have Erica that did the Twitter logo and Ziomara with the Pokeball, both of which are things that are very popular and a lot of people are familiar with. But it is important to pick something that you care about when you're doing your art project. When you are picking your logo, you can think of things like brands or you can even think of things like comic book characters and the logos they have. It is important when you pick out a logo that you do something that you are capable of actually doing. The Kool-Aid logo looks awesome. It was a lot of work for the person that did it. The Starbucks logo is one of the best ones I've ever seen, but because it's so detailed and took so long, the person did not get to finish their project. Here are two of my favorite examples by Mariella and Brianna Orbana. The reason I really like these ones are because of all of the different color choices that they used throughout their project. You can see that both people did lots of different color schemes from things like warm colors, cool colors, analogous colors, triadic colors, split complementary, monochromatic, and complementary colors. And they also did an artist choice. You don't necessarily have to use any of those, but it is kind of fun to play around and look at what different colors look really good together, which is why when we did this, we used all these different color schemes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our larger of the two papers and we are going to fold it. I'm gonna fold this paper three times hamburger style, taking the two short sides, bringing them together, turn my paper, grab the two short sides, bring them together and do that a third time. Now you can see that the smaller paper that I have, which is actually a manila piece of paper, fits into the exact size when my paper's all folded up. So my manila paper is four and a half inches by six inches. The next thing I'm gonna do is pick out a logo that I'm going to draw onto the manila paper. I wanna draw it really nicely on here. It'll help me when I transfer it over onto the larger of the papers. Once my logo is drawn out really nicely, I'm going to flip the paper over and I'm going to scribble on the back. Try to use either a soft pencil or turn your pencil so that it's at a low angle so hopefully you don't rip through your page. Next, we're gonna line up our manila paper on top of the white paper with our logo facing up and the scribble down. And then we are going to trace very nicely over top of all of the logo, making sure to go nice and slow and not skip any spots. Once you trace it out, make sure to kind of hold it down in place and lift up one side to make sure you didn't miss anything. If you didn't, then you can take that off of the paper. You're going to flip it over to the scribbly side and you need to scribble on the back again but make sure that you're doing this not on top of your final draft, otherwise you're gonna leave ghost marks everywhere you won't like, which is why I'm doing it off to the side of the desk. And then once I do that, I can flip it back over, trace in the second spot, and repeat until all eight boxes are filled. Once you have all eight boxes with the same logo in the same spot, by doing the scribbling on the back, flipping it over, placing it in the box and tracing it, you can go ahead and start to add your colors. I'm doing lots of different types of color schemes. In the first box, I was doing complementary colors. I'm using just yellow and purple. In the second box, I was doing cool colors like green, blue, and purple. My third box, I did warm colors, red, oranges, and yellows. My third box, I was doing triadic colors, which are three colors equally spaced on the color wheel, like the red, blue, and yellow that I used. 
my fifth box, I was doing monochromatic, so I was just doing different types of purples. My sixth box, I did analogous, which are three colors right next to each other on a color wheel. The seventh box, I did split complementary. And the last box is usually artist choice, so on this one I was doing things like golds and silvers together. Try to have fun with it. I recommend trying some of these color schemes to kind of see what color schemes you think look best together and then kind of go from there. But try to have fun with it. I would love to see the awesome artwork you guys make. Here again is my final along with the different color schemes I used for each in case you want to look them up. And once again, thanks for watching Alistair Art. Have an awesome day and keep making that art.